presentation of 13 ABC Action News. Now, your table is ready. Join 13 ABC's Jeff Smith with the decision makers of Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. This is the Round Table. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Sunday afternoon. We have said goodbye to February. Hello to March Madness. Uh, we are talking with Paula Hicks Hudson. She is the newly named Toledo City Council President and welcome to you. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to talk about uh, the Toledo City paper and uh, selecting once again this year its best of list and yeah. where some of your favorites fell this year. But Paula, uh, welcome to you. First thank time you. on the round table and congratulations. Thank Madam President, much. as we say. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, as you look at this selection and, and this was something, I mean, do you accept this position with wide eyes and, and ready to go or do you accept it with a little bit of hesitation because one, there have been a lot of presidents before you in the last five years. There's been a lot of transition. Two, there's been a lot of, uh, I, don't, I don't want to call it turmoil, there's just been a lot of uh, bickering between city council members over the years. How do you, how do you kind of head the ship at this point? Well, I think you head the ship by having com conversations and communicating with all members of council, respecting that each are separately elected officials who are were elected by the citizens of the city, that, and that's our common goal, yeah. that we were elected to represent their interests. And so how do we reach that is, I think, primarily through having conversations and talking about those issues that um, uh, affect each of us. You've been representing District 4 for how long? Uh, this is my third year. As, as, as just a representative of a district and, and from the inside looking in, if yes. you will, yes. uh, what's your read on council? Council is, it's made up of, of different personalities with, with different interests, but we all have a common goal, which okay. is really to serve the citizens of the city. And I think that's the strength that we do have. Uh, we come at it different ways with our different philosophies uh, and experiences, but I think all together we, we are the microcosm of the city. And so that's why you have the differences and the strong personalities and strong ideas about certain things as, way, as the way government should operate. Uh, you have uh, come on to council in a very tough economic time yes. and as you look at the struggles you, you said in your piece that you did with Bill Horman earlier this week <laughs> you you yes. felt as if district 4 was kind of uh, uh, I guess uh, a microcosm I'll use that word that. again of of what the city of Toledo is all about why, why do you see it that way well I you can't get any place from downtown without going through the district and I've, I used to say, when I was running, I talked about it's the heart of the city because the district stretches from the Maumee River out to Detroit Avenue and it goes north to Souter. Mm -hmm. It goes south to the, to, uh, I think it's the railroad tracks. So it, it's made up of historic districts. It's made up of the businesses. It's made up of small neighborhoods. It's made up of challenged neighborhoods. Yeah. And so for me, I think it represents the city. This happened, you got this, because mm -hmm. Joe McNamara is running for mayor, yes. said he would rather focus his attention because it's a big responsibility. And, and I want to show you a little bit. We asked some of the other council members this week mm -hmm. what they had to say about the presidency and, and why it matters or uh, sure. what's, what it entails. Here's, here's a little bit of that. Unless you were looking really hard, I've been through four or five council presidents and things don't change a lot. I think, you know, the, as I say, the president is just, is just uh, you know, fulfilling a role, a very important role in terms of the liaison with the administration and setting the agenda, all those kinds of things. But, um, you know, I, I, I think there's been a decent continuity in terms of, you know, my ability to, to uh, get the things done that I think are important. And I would expect other uh, council members to be able to get their things done as well. You know, there's always tension between council and, and uh, uh, the administration. The administration wants what they want, council wants what we want, and uh, that creates some tension, you know, and, and, and only one thing gets to be, uh, you know, gets to happen normally, so. I did say when I was council president I likened it to herding cats because everybody's got a different agenda. <clears throat> it's the council president's job to try to pull those agendas together. So Stephen Steele, Mike Craig, and then Rob Ludeman there at the right. end. Rob Ludeman, a former council president right. uh, in his own right. But you hear what they say, and, and, and Mike started talking a little bit about the administration yes. and yes. working with the administration. You as the head of council now in a direct relationship, mm -hmm. uh, closer than you were maybe as District 4 representative. But what are your thoughts? 
One, and I ask you, as an African American and, and your relationship with Mike Bell as an African American uh, mayor, two, as a Democrat and an independent and, and dealing with the mayor on those two levels. Well, I think it, regardless of, of looking at race or looking at party affiliation, I think we have to look at what our roles are. And, and there's a check and balance. The administration is, is the executive branch, the, the uh, council is the legislative branch. And as a, as a check and balanced, we have to make sure that we do everything the right way and for the benefit of the citizens. The relationship I have with, with the mayor stems not only from uh, being of the same race, but we work together mm -hmm. in Governor Strickland's administration. So that's when I got to know, know the mayor uh, in Columbus. You did what? I was the uh, director of the legislative, no, I'm sorry, the um, chief legal counsel for the Office of Budget and Management. Uh, under you have law practice outside of I being do. a member of council. I do, so I have a lot on my plate. Yeah. But as but getting back to your question, yeah. I think it's most important to look at what our, our distinct roles are and to work together uh, along those lines. The relationship I have is one of asking and being an advocate for the uh, people that I represent, the mm -hmm. citizens in the district. I look at this role as being one to advocate for the uh, other members of council. So that one of the things that I think we need to do is to be more, to look at it more on the administrative side mm -hmm. and to make sure that legislation comes to us in a proper format, it comes timely, and to, to be able to uh, advocate on behalf of the other members when there are issues that, that face them to, so that they can be successful. I see the president of council as one of, as, as uh, Councilman Ludeman said, of herding cats. Yeah. That's, that's really true, yeah. uh, but it's also one of making sure that the cats are heard. Let, let me ask you this, obviously with the history between you and uh, Michael Bell mm -hmm. and, uh, and looking at this being an election year and there has been a lot said from union leadership mm -hmm. which is staunchly democratic Correct. and obviously you being a Democrat, Michael right. Bell, former Democrat, now an independent right. as mayor, but do you see this as a problem going forward for the mayor, you being the head of uh, council and him trying to get reelected? The reason I, t I'm going to answer it this way, I took this position to try to remove some of that politics because it's important that we do the business of the city. And it's most important because we're looking at some... Define what that means for you, me the business, removing, removing, removing the, the politics. politics. Well, for example, I, I, when, you're, when you're running a campaign, you are so consumed in making sure that you, at least for me, that you meet all of the, you know, meet as many people as you can mm -hmm. to get your message out. And, and that's critical if you want to get elected. Sometimes the business of, of government is, it's larger than my, my individual message. Less ego, more we go. Yeah. yeah. Very good. I'm going to, I'm going to use that. No. And so, <laughs> I'm going to copyright that. Okay, you better then, because <laughs> I'm going to use it. But I, I really think it's most important that, it, that we are the we go, that we look at those issues that surround all of us. And that's why I talk about trying to I think that was part of some of the reason that some of the members of council thought that it was it would be better for for the former president to step down since he right. declared and it also gives him more freedom to do what he needs to do in this role as a candidate for this position. Is it easier said than done to look aside from party affiliation though as this goes forward and I, trying to as yes. you heard from the other council members trying to get individual agendas and individual sure thoughts and ideas passed. I, it's very difficult to separate mm -hmm. one's one's partisanship. I think, and I say that not in the sense of that you use it to, as a, as a, a hammer to wield power, but it's really how I look at what's the role of government. Yeah. I, in my role in, as a Democrat, I see government differently than a Republican does and an independent would do because I believe that, that government is designed to help people and that that's why we, we collect together as a community because together we are stronger and we help those who don't necessarily have all the uh, wherewithal that they need to be able to be successful. And that's a little bit different than what I think Republicans believe. They believe yeah. in smaller government and they believe that you know individuals are, should be able to take care of themselves. And I don't necessarily believe that. So with that lens, I'm going to look at everything with that because that's what I embrace. That's what I believe, regardless of party affiliation or not. And so with that, that's how you know 
I, I approach pretty much everything and looking at ways for all of us to be successful, all of us to be winners. And I see this role as one of more of managing, managing the process and that's in helping the other council members do what they need to do. We got just a couple minutes sure. left, but uh, we're taping or we're airing this on uh, Sunday and earlier this week, uh, uh, Mike DeWine was here trying to rid the area of blight, the neighborhoods around the state of blight. And as you look at some of the, the biggies that are on the list moving forward and, and getting those neighborhoods righted and also water rates. Water rates correct. is a big one that has That's come correct. up as of late. Um, what are some of the biggies for you in the next couple of weeks? You just mentioned the, the, the two main ones. Um, one is for me because District 4 has been plagued with a number of the abandoned ha properties mm -hmm. that have been a blight on the the neighborhood a drag on the economy that's important the water rates we need to be able to to meet the consent decree and do it in a thoughtful positive way so that residents under number one understand what we're doing and why we're doing it and why the cost is the way it is but you as district four representative and even now as council president is this two hundred dollar fee charge the way to go is it going to stick the, are you going to let it stick? for the reconnect yes see, uh, at this point I think we're still looking at at that and it's going to, it will probably, I shouldn't call it a reconnect fee. Yeah. What we're looking at is probably ways in which it makes sense to apply this fee. Mm -hmm. uh, it should, I don't believe it should be across the board. I mean that, that if there was a, st I know we only have a short time, but where a person changed their title of their property from individual to a, tr to a trust, and they were charged that reconnect fee. Mm -hmm. The only thing changed was the 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 deed. Yeah. No change in service. No move. No turning it on and off. That's that's not the right way to go. But if there's some op if there's a need to make sure that there's funds available, then I think we should look at that fee. Paula, I appreciate mm -hmm. you oh, spending sure. some time with us here on the round table. Thank you so much, Thank and you. we look forward to working with you here in the very near future. Thank I'll you. extend a hand. It's good Take to see you.